Um, I call the meetings to order at 6.37 p.m. for Wednesday. Okay, welcome to the November 15th, 2023 special meeting in Parks Commission. This is a hybrid meeting with commissioners, city staff, and members of the public participating at the Ariaga Family Domestic Center in accordance with public health guidelines for in-person meetings and members of the public participating remotely. I would like to introduce commissioners and staff presidents. Myself, uh, Chair Mayor mm -hmm. Lignac, Commissioner Woman Lees, Commissioner Kelsey Perio, Commissioner Kate Russell. Staff present include Library and Community Service Director Shine Lanhart. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, Assistant Library and Community Service Director Sekta, Library and Community Service Supervisor Trisha Mullen and Management Analysis, Ashley Walker. Ashley will be helping facilitate the meeting. Ashley will please take a moment and provide instructions to the commission and members of the public on how the meeting will proceed. Thank you, Chair. For members of the public who are attending the meeting virtually and wish to provide public comment, I think the Chair calls for public comment on the item you wish to speak on. Please engage the raise hand function at the bottom of your screen. For those who are calling in from a landline or cell phone, please press star nine to raise your virtual. Remember, oh, excuse me. Because tonight's meeting is a special meeting, there will be no call for general public comment. Therefore, public comment will be limited to the items on the agenda. However, members of the public are welcome to send feedback on any subject in the online suggestion box at normalpark.gov/slash feedback or in writing any suggestion. If there are a large number of public commenters, time limit may be adjusted by the chair in order to allow everyone a chance to comment. When your turn for public comment has arrived, staff will unmute you. With that, I'll return the meeting to the chair. We begin with C regular business. C1 approval of September 18th meeting minutes and the September 27th meeting minutes. Ashley, do we have any public comment on this item? At this time, if you'd like to make a public comment on this item, please notify staff by using the raise hand feature at the bottom of your Zoom screen. If you're dialing in, you can use the star nine function to engage it. And I don't think we can use there. And we don't have any in person and none online. Would the commissioner I'd like to make a motion to approve the minutes? I'll make a motion. Do we have a second for the stated motion? Do we have a motion to approve the September 18th and September 27th meeting minutes? Chair Brunetti, how do you vote? Yes. Chair Lee, how do you vote? Yes. Uh, Chair Terrio? Yes. And Chair Wet, excuse me, Commissioner West. Yeah. And everybody chair team. You promoted <laughs> everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on to, on to item C2, the commission will recommend parks and recreation facilities master plan then. Director Reinhardt and Dr. H. Supervisor Mullen will give a presentation. Yes, uh, thank you, Chair Finlagage. I um sorry, I'm just still trying to get connected to the Zoom meeting here. That's why I've been working on my computer. It's like I'm in the room also, but I can share the presentation. So joining me to deliver this presentation is Library and Community Services Supervisor Trisha Mullen. I think we're gonna tag team the slides. I just want to note we have another staff person in the audience, Keeper O'Hara, who's a recreation coordinator, um, out of the courts and not many other areas of the department. Um, let's see how to turn that off. Sorry, while I deal with the tech here. Um, and we're almost there as far as the slides. Okay, so the item for the commission this evening is to recommend to the city council a draft addendum to the parks and recreation facilities master plan to include pickleball and some other updates. Um, we'll uh, kind of keep the presentation brief. All this information is in the staff report, but just as a refresher of what's here. Um, I should think Trisha is going to kick off the first part and then we'll take turns. Go ahead. Thank you. So the recommendation to the staff recommends that the Parks and Rec um, Commission recommend to the city council a draft addendum to the Parks and Recreation Facility Master Plan to include pickleball and other updates. 
the purpose of the draft addendum. When new or changing community needs have the potential to result in capital improvements to the city's park and recreation facilities, the recommended best practice is to evaluate the needs in the context of the city's overall facility master plans. In response to community interest in pickleball, city council directed city staff to work with the Parks and Rec Commission to develop a focused addendum to the Parks and Rec facility master plan to include pickleball. Focus of the draft addendum. The draft addendum in a tech A packet includes three focus areas. One, to provide recommendations related to current and future pickleball facilities in Menlo Park. Two, to establish a recommended timeline for periodically reviewing the Parks and Rec facility master plan, such as every two years to provide updated information regarding the city's parks and recreation facility needs and to create new addenda if needed for evolving needs and circumstances. Three, to create a framework and reference point to help guide the formation of other parks and facility master plan addenda that may be deemed necessary in the future. The information in the draft addendum. The draft addendum includes information and data that was used to help inform recommendation, including locations of city parks with tennis and pickleball courts, review of pickleball facilities in other nearby jurisdictions. Menlo Park Citywide Tennis Court Usage Survey Results from 2021, Recreation Community Program Survey Results, Observations of Court Usage at Nihon Park in 2023, Lua Oaks Park Improvement Project Concept Plan Alternative, including football courts, Community Engagement Timeline of Public Meeting Related to Football. And the next slide shows the parks within Menlo Park for pickleball. Uh, in reference for tonight, we have Kelly Park at the top, um, on the side, and the Oaks Park, and then Newmont Park. And for tennis court locations, currently we have um, locations at Burgess, Kelly Park, La Entrada, Neon, and Willow Oaks. Um, and all of the court numbers are listed there with lighted courts. Great, and uh, uh, the commission so most of this information before, but it's here available. If you need for reference on 2021, of uh, city staff conducted a survey of tennis court users at the time, folks who had tennis court keys, asking them various questions around their usage of the courts. This one here shows that um, Milan Park is far and away the most heavily used, at least as recorded by tennis users, followed by Willow Oaks and Burgess. Uh, we, I think the commission reviewed this already, a quick review of pickleball courts in other nearby jurisdictions, kind of showing you know, how that sizes up according to population, um, showing that Menlo Park's kind of somewhere in the, in the middle as far as the, the number of courts per 10,000 residents compared to some of these other communities. Um, recently, um, actually over the, the, from this past October 28th, through November 3rd, city staff physically went to the courts at Neon Park and did head counts of the people on the courts at the time of each of those observations. Uh, they were there uh, pretty much every hour from 8 a.m. to 10 p.m., seven straight days. Um, weren't able to be there every single time. Like, for example, you see some blanks there on Halloween, but enough to just sort of get a sense. So this chart here shows Neelon Park court number five, which is currently uh, primarily for pickleball. Um, has four total pickleball courts. Uh, each pickleball court, they own an active play, accommodates four people. So 16 people would be all courts fully in use. Um, so I won't go too deeply here, but you can kind of see it's, you know, varies from nobody there to at capacity to in a couple of cases, see mm -hmm. capacity there, as far as the number of heads that were counted. Uh, similarly, we're just grouping the other four tennis courts together in this review. Uh, there are four total tennis courts here. Um, each of those courts, you know, like fully book would have four people on them, and there's like a doubles match happening off of these singles. Um, but you can kind of see, oops, sorry, but um, add a slide advancement there. You see that at the various times of day, sometimes nobody's there, other times you've seen, you know, pretty well used just kind of varies um you know obviously there's some caveats here at the time of year um there's halloween week 
Um, we certainly will do some additional observations, which is going to give a sense of a snapshot in time of the two courts, some of the two sets of users simultaneously, I think is the point here. Um, let's see, this is just for reference, the Willow Oaks Park Improvement Project, one of the concept plans that City Council considered, they haven't taken action on this part of it yet, is to potentially include pickleball at that location. One potential option would be out there next to the other, to the tennis courts that are there. Um, and then in the draft addendum, um, actually, I think I'm going to hand off to Trisha now to talk about the recommendations that are in the event. So there are five recommendations in the draft addendum. First being uh, focused on the Long Park uh, to dedicate the current four pickleball courts at Court 5 exclusively to pickleball, at noise mitigation, um, a new access gate, additional seating, and new striping when the court is next resurfaced. Kelly Park um, dedicate the four pickleball courts currently located at Court 1 exclusively to pickleball and um, add noise mitigation and new striping when the resurfaced. The Willow Oaks Park is, um, Sean was just stating, uh, considered building new purpose built pickleball court in conjunction with the project. And on the pickleball capital of the project, the ability study, the feasibility study to evaluate additional potential locations for additional pickleball court capacity and number of work. And then lastly, timeline for future park current facility master plan reviews, undertake periodic reviews of the park current facility master plan such as once every two years to review plan progress, provide updated information regarding the city's parks and recreation facilities, and create new agenda if needed to reflect evolving community needs and circumstances. So with that, um, we took a look at the parks and facility master plan and kind of um, used the format in that plan to create this matrix. Um, the top of the matrix, the project types, um, P is for programmatic, S is for straightforward, and C is for CIP project, um, the tiers one, two, and three, and then lastly, the cost, one dollar sign being less than 100,000, two being 100,000, 500,000, and, um, and, and beyond. Um, so first is uh, dedicated, uh, dedicated pickleball courts for Milan remove the tennis court striping and install striping for pickleball only. Um, consider adding noise mitigation material at a second access gate and install additional seating. So dedicating it would be programmatic, simple would be the um, striping, and the CIP projects would be both the sound mitigation and access gate. And then just because CIP is capital improvement program. Oh. And then for Kelly Park, um, again, dedicate the, the courts to pickleball is a programmatic. Consider adding noise mitigation is a CIP or community improvement. Um, remove the tennis court striping and install permanent pickleball striping is simple. Um, and then for Milan, um, consider constructing new purpose, purpose built pickleball courts at oh. Willow, I'm sorry, Willow Oaks Park yeah. um, in conjunction with the pro project improvement. Um, that's a CIP project. And then pickleball capital project feasibility study, conduct a feasibility study to evaluate potential locations in Menlo Park for adding pickleball courts for court capacity, including the city of North Park, on use facility, on the advice local school districts, and development projects in the pipeline that include a public recreation component, and that would be a program. For next steps, if the PRC recommends the draft addendum in attachment A as presented, or with only minor revisions, city staff will present the draft addendum to city council for acceptance tentatively in January 2024. If the PRC recommends substantive, substantive Revisions to the draft addendum in Catcher A, the city staff will synthesize the PRC's feedback and present the revised draft addendum to the PRC for additional review tentatively in January 2024, then to city council at a future date. Thank you, Tricia. And I'll just, I'll just add um, just an appreciation for all the members of the community who have weighed in on this topic for uh, quite some time. I very much value your um, perspective, of course. We've spoken to many of you. Um, and also the commission would like to really acknowledge 
all of your effort and attention to this uh, topic uh, over the past several months. It's so important to have these discussions in that public forum you know, through through the commission and not like in some back room somewhere. So it's important for, for that. Um, and also um, important to kind of see the data, kind of verify it, and also to um, really consider the city's uh, existing master plans and the strategy for all of our um, facility needs over time and plug this clear um, an important need into that strategy in a, in a thoughtful way. So that's why the addendum is here and we uh, look forward to the discussion. Thank you. Uh, before we go to public comment, actually, how many speakers do we have on this item? So we need uh, six in person and up to nine online. Uh, okay. Um, if I could, uh, through the chair, if you would like to ask for the online participants, if they want to make a public comment, that way we can sort of get a, a, a feel for how many okay. of the online participants want to make a public comment. So if those of you online want to make a comment, if you could use the raise hand for Ashley to have a count in that, and then we will close that once we have all of the counts and have the last a name of the last person that will speak. Online. So if you'd like to make a comment online for item C2, mm -hmm. please use the raise hand feature or press star nine to engage the raise hand function. Let's give them a few minutes. Thank you. Okay. So again, at this time, if you'd like to make a public comment on item C2, uh, please notify us by using the raise hand feature at the bottom of your Zoom screen or pressing star nine. So we have um, eight in person and two on one, three on three. Okay. Well, we will have, um, so you have 10 total? 11. 11 total. So given the amount of speakers we have online and in person, um, we will limit to two minutes each. And those of you who are speaking live, if you could, um, once your name is called, come up to the center of the room and then the designated smoke with an X. So that way- It's a stripe, but- please, yeah. oh, okay. <laughs> We did the best we could. So that, I don't know if here, but that your voice is also projected to the speaker camera so that those who are joining us here at CEO as well. Thank you. And I think we're going to try to present two minutes for Okay, so our first speaker will be Andrea Baylin. I'm sorry, did I pronounce that totally wrong? Andrea Baylin, I gave you my time. Oh, okay, that's correct. She's yielding her time to Jim Shot. So Hiroko Yoshida and Andrea Baylin have yielded their time to Jim Shot's Jim. And you want me to pull up a PowerPoint, I believe? Yes, thank you. Okay. Good to go. To the uh, Park and Recreation Commission, John, and your team. And to your point, certainly appreciate all the time and effort that's gone into this. It's certainly been a long process and expecting to imagine the effort due to salt to me. Um, there are three or four things to uh, want to suggest. And this is in addition to the master plan, which has primarily 
been working toward the longer term goals, although uh, with appreciation there are some short term changes that are that happening with the court number five. Uh, would like to ask the, the uh, staff and commission to consider two additional courts at uh, Neyland Park. Uh, we're often at capacity this summer. There were easily occasions with 18, 24, 28 people waiting to play the ball. It isn't always like that, but often it is overflowing. We'd like to set up, we'd like to ask to set up for four for shared use of tennis. And with that, Ed Striping, the next, next slide. Um, at striping to comply with uh, USTA regulations for getting two courts to one tennis court that, that we love. Uh, one thing that this does solve or address is that the foot sizes are substandard. They're uh, not suitable for competitive pickleball type. They're crowded on one court. They're great for recreational use, but there's no opportunity for formal competition or formal use. At least in, in the limited space, the court specific court itself is correct. It's the outside area for work for broader play. And the next slide. As you may know, we conducted a 30 day survey, 31 day survey used this last September, and staff has uh, created its, its own survey. Uh, very much complements the same information. The difference with this is that the, um, from the, the data that Sean presented earlier, the green is highlighting times during the day, during the week, when the tennis courts were empty, one, two, three, or four courts were empty. There are two tennis players, obviously, there's still only three courts and one or two courts open. And the request here is that we consider opening, stripe, striping, one, one more tennis court or two pickleball courts to the USDA standard, and also then set up a mechanism for shared use of tennis. There's no concern if the tennis courts are all full. It's very frustrating to look when you pickleball court and see that courts three and four are empty night after night. That's not always the case, but my understanding is that current regulation for the pilot program prohibits pickleball play of any type on the tennis court. Well, the answer consideration to change that and find a formula for shared use. Mm -hmm. Staff has provided information. Uh, one of the things that's just a little disheartening is that overall tennis revenue is declining, fees are declining. I don't know if it's peaked during pandemic or if there's more access or less interest, but. Um, one, one, one of the small ways we could do which we meet popular demand is to offer pickleball clinics, pickleball lessons at Avon Park in, in addition to Kelly Park, and expect they'd be very popular and at least some revenue source among possibilities. Um, it appears that about 10 or 11 percent of tennis players are non resident. That's about expected. I think they do raise a portion of the entire given the, uh, the larger fees. With um, non residents pay. So I'll talk the um, tennis court reservations revenue is also steady or declining. It peaked in, in uh, the year 2021, again, in the pandemic. Interesting complement to the re re non resident of 11%. Uh, reservations are 19%, 19 or 20% non resident. So there's a, a greater use of it, of course. Uh, one of the things we noticed in the survey this summer was that the uh, there appeared to be a large number of private lessons here. And I suspect that that is uh, part, part of the uh, part of the reason the, the revenue has been as high as it's been. And this isn't to say there shouldn't be private lessons, but in the same time, we hope that that might extend the pick of all to open courts for private lessons, or maybe there's some formula to enforce that to city city employee instructors. Um, I, I think I don't think I'm alone to suggest that there are daily multiple instructors teaching with a basketball of balls. Sometimes there's an individual, I understand that, but one day after that might be considered 
Uh, well, that slide is a, is a simple thing. It's asking it's the pickleball community, perhaps with the tennis community, to continue to contribute to um, comment and recommendations. My impression, and what one staff member told, told me directly, we won't consider your input. We're relying on the survey, PRC, and, and city council. And I don't know if that's the case, but would like to ask you, tennis and pickleball, could that have an active voice to help recommend and give suggestions? An example, before we spend $50,000 on noise mitigation, maybe, maybe moving the court might be a way to reduce the noise. Uh, this is another thing from the data. Okay. Good, all right. Thank you. Thank you. Is there a way to put the if there's a letter for this just is that is there a way to have the timer on before um, for the one the rest of the time? Yes, but we'll show you the when it's shared. Okay. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. All I'm gonna to add to. I just want to make sure for the speaker you can see it too. Yeah. That way we're not just making up a ton of stuff. Um, yes. after you get your full amount. Robbie? Mm -hmm. Using the Midland Park uh, courts for many years. So thank you for the facility. Uh, my comment is on the recent uh, usage survey. I think it's for one week. I would recommend that uh, it be uh, at least a month long survey. My experience last year, for the last several years, but I play at least twice a week at Newland in the evenings. And there's almost, uh, I play regularly on six o'clock. And uh, there's almost always a wait time for the tennis courts. So I don't think there's really any excess capacity to, to reduce the number of tennis courts. <clears throat> um, usually, uh, courts one and two are taken by coaching. And so, uh, three and four are the only public courts available. So I think that tennis courts are uh, very, very busy at the peak peak usage. So I would suggest that the survey focus on the peak usage hours because if the courts are busy during the peak usage, I think it doesn't really matter what happens in the off hours. If the uh, the peak usage hours are busy, there's no there's no excess capacity. Uh, <clears throat> With regard to the uh, proposal to restrike the, some of the tennis courts, uh, one issue is when you restrike, it's kind of confusing to play. Most tennis players, if you survey, would not prefer to use sports to pick up all lines. It, it becomes confusing. Um, so I just think that that solution is not workable. So I think the solution is to build more pick up ball courts at a different location and preserve the existing courts at Neyland Park. Um, so then also we would not have any residents complaining about the noise issue with the water, with the people law courts. There's no noise issue with tennis courts. But I think that the solution would be to build out more more uh more people law courts in a quiet location. Thank you. Hold on. Thank you. Why did you do this? Shani Patel, Patel. Hi, everyone. I think many of you have met before. Um, I wanted to continue the conversation where we let off, left off last time because I think there were a couple of things I heard during the discussion that obviously I couldn't address, but I wanted to address. I want to start with noise mitigation specifically, um, and I'm still in favor of building courts at Burgess Park. I would love to see us build the pickleball facility there. I think it could be amazing. But when it comes to noise mitigation, it simply doesn't work. I've never seen them be able to reduce the decibels of noise more than 10 decibels. It's just not enough when you have apartment dwellers there that are 42 feet away and they're two stories up, which actually makes the noise carry even more. It's just not going to work. USA Pickleball, the governing body of pickleball, actually recommends now that you do not place pickleball courts within 200 feet of residences. That's both for noise and for lighting because they do see that they have a lot of lawsuits. 
Um, if we want them to consult, they definitely could, and they're open to that. But the thing is, there's enough data out there in the industry now to know what works and what doesn't. And all we have to do is actually look at Circus Club because they're having this problem right now. And the nearest residents, they're 150 feet away. They've already done the noise mitigation with the sheeting. That didn't work. They actually moved the ports. Now they're looking at bigger sheeting. Nothing's working. Now they're looking at paddles. They don't know what to do. So we have a serious problem here that we need to consider. And I think that keeping the ports at Milan long term is not going to be a good solution. Um, I love playing there. I just don't think that that's the answer for Mountain Park. Um, I do have extra time that was given to me by Carol. And then also, um, yeah, so I have extra time. Oh, I'm sorry, Carol, because she's online. Oh, Carol Fan. Oh, yeah. Are you okay. And Ryan. Thanks, Ryan. Okay. So I want to talk about why I think that Burgess is the best location. Number one, it's central for all of Menlo. You've got all the transportation there. You've got buses, trains, et cetera. It's not part of the Safe Roots project. It's not part of Vision Zero. It's not part of anything right now that's impacting any kind of traffic. Meanwhile, you've got the basketball court itself. And one of the things I want to talk about, it's not about getting rid of basketball. It's about the location of basketball. Because it's right next to the train tracks. It's more than 400 feet away from anybody's house. And it's right next to the skate, right? It's right next to the skate park. It's the location that makes sense. I'm not saying like we're, you know, get rid of basketball. We could easily put in another half court there or something. And I think that that would be a good solution. But I love where it is right now. Also, you've already got the surface. So I think it would be really quick to be able to like switch it over if you did want to make that pickleball, even if that were a pilot. Also, you've got the parking lot next to it, which is double deep. You guys have probably seen that. And pickleball courts only need to be 23 feet wide. So you could easily take a little extra. And I think we could get at least six courts in there, which I think is a lot closer to what we really want. Because the new one's never going to grow more than it already is. And you're always going to have residents. And we always have this problem with the people who live next to the parks. I mean, it's the same thing with Willow Oaks, right? I think with the exception of Burgess. Or if you look at Kelly, which nobody wants to play over there because there's no sound wall and it's right next to the freeway, um, it's just not really a good solution. And again, noise mitigation, it just doesn't work that much, you know? So you build a cement wall, so we can talk about it. I think it's kind of difficult. Um, basketball courts, people were talking about not having enough basketball. We have seven full courts at Hillview. We have three full courts at Ensignal. Right, like there is a lot of basketball around. You've got four half courts at Laurel. There's a lot of access to basketball outside. We don't have the same access to tennis courts or to pickleball courts. So I do think that's also something to consider at Burgess, especially in the near term. If we could just suck it up and maybe convert those courts for now, so that people could just enjoy pickleball and you know some of this pain goes away. Um, also, I think if you do need more basketball, another thing is to ask about the SRI projects. It's right next to Burgess. That would be a way to get more basketball in there because you don't have the same noise component that we have with pickleball, which is you put it close to houses and people are going to complain. And so I just think we need to take that into account and just look at the reality of where we really are. And think about our residents too. I mean, there were a lot of people calling in last time, right? Same with that's like for that. And I think on a lot of these calls, right? I remember when Paul Pick and some of the people who live next to the zip line were calling in and complaining. We locked up the zip line for like what, a year and a half? What about the people in the apartment? What are we doing for them? How are we addressing their concerns? They've been complaining. They're up, you know, till whatever hours. They're like up at seven o'clock in the morning. What do we do for them? We ignore them when we say, let's make the pickleball courts open without any regard to that mitigation, hours of operation. How would you feel? Like, I feel like crap. I really do. So I just think we need to be more thoughtful about how we're doing this. But I think that everybody in the community, including and this is the tennis community and the pickleball community, would pitch in for those sports too. Like, people want this badly. So I would just say really reconsider for this. I do think that's the solution. Um, as far as double striping at Milan, we just have so much tennis going on there. I'm waiting for courts all the time. It's um, I just don't think that that's going to work anymore, given the demand for 
tennis too. So I would say keep with Burgess. That's where I'd like to see it. And in terms of the people that instructors, most of them are teaching Menlo Park residents on court one and two. So if they're teaching Menlo Park residents, they're still being used by Menlo Park. Yeah. That's it for now. I think that was my whole six minutes now. Thank you. Thank you. Peter Diefenbaum. wanted to uh, add some more information to Jim's comments with regard to the numbers and, and Nate Gardner uh, uh, handed me that packet there and some surrounding communities and and just really want to make a couple of important points. Um, you know, one of the slides that is frustrating for pickleball players is the one where it shows uh, pickleball courts per 10,000 residents because uh, again, if you look at your handout, you got Mountain View with six, Portola Valley with eight, Los Altos six, Foster City six, Saratoga six, Birmingham 11. And that is how pickleball works with the community coming together with a group of courts. And so, Neon, we have four. So, to say that it's right in the middle compared to surrounding areas, we're really at the bottom because it's really not eight when you talk about. The pickleball community and what we use in Menlo Park. And I think that's a really important point. Um, you know, the other thing is you get a lot of different information. Um, one thing that should be pointed out, uh, it was mentioned circus. Circus actually got the wrong um, uh, noise reduction uh, sheets. That's their problem. Um, they got the, uh, they didn't get the correct ones, and that's what they're dealing with right now and why the sound hasn't been reduced like it should. Um, and I think the other thing to point out is, you know, you saw the numbers as far as when people are using the courts, you know, our ask is a temporary trial period, dual use in the morning. And say dual courts don't work, they're working in all these other surrounding communities. I don't see why Menlo Park people can't get along and make it work. But we're talking about the main thing is in the morning, um, when we really use the courts, when tennis courts are not being used, um, we come up with some sort of schedule to where um, we can we can use that program. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Go to some online comments. If your phone number ends in three six four nine, you can address the commission. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes. Can you just state your name? Yeah, my name is Neil Wolf. Um, I live on Middle, uh, across from Neilon Park. Um, so my main point or comment that I want to make tonight is that there isn't sufficient parking uh, for Neilon currently. Uh, pickleball users are a big reason why there's no parking. They show up in the morning at the same time as the dog park um, and at all times of the, the day. Um, they're new. It seems like it's growing. Um, I don't really have a preference pickleball versus tennis, but um, it seems like there's so many people out there and there's no parking capacity um, and it's pushing the other users of the park away. I know like a couple of days ago I was outside and I was talking to a police officer that was giving out parking tickets to over 30 vehicles that were parked in the bike lane. These were mostly tennis players and parents of kids at the park because the parking lot was at capacity full. Dozens of cars parked in the wood chips, dozens of cars parked in the bike lane. Um, they, all got, they all got parking tickets. So the main thing that I want to say tonight is that for every pickleball player that is at Neon, they're displacing kids, they're displacing um, users of Little House, they're displacing people that aren't aware that this meeting is even happening tonight and don't have a voice in it. Um, I, for one, only got a text 20 minutes ago that this meeting was happening, and I live right on the park. No signs, no nothing. No one, no, no one that uses the kid park is even aware that this is happening, but it's directly affecting them. It's by far the busiest and most used kid park, and now that they took away street parking on middle and put resident-only parking on the side in parallel streets, 
there is no parking. So it's displacing, you know, the most vulnerable people from little house, young kids, uh, baseball players, the preschool, there is no parking. Um, so that's my comment. Thank you. Bingham, you can hear us, you can address the commission. Perfect. Thank you, Mr. Online, you can hear us, you can address the commission. Your phone number ends in one seven. Hello. Hi. Hi, my name is Janice, and um, I live on University Drive. And I agree with the caller that just got off the phone. Um, I've been living in my unit here in one of the apartment buildings for this is my third year now. And um, I have to say, I have a grandson and I have a disability. And my grandson's bedroom literally is right there at the tennis court and the lights come into his bedroom and he has um, ADHA. And so I have to really bring him into my bedroom. And even in my bedroom, we can still hear the knocking of the balls hitting the, the uh, paddles and it's extremely loud. And to be, to have to deal with this on a Sunday morning as well, at like six in the morning or if, if whatever time it starts, it's very early and it's still dark outside and it's all the way till 10 o'clock at night. Tick, 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 tick. And now there's the yelling. Sometimes there's cursing. I've uh, recorded the sounds that I have from there. Had it not been for one uh, woman that I have been in touch with in regards to this situation, I would not have had a, a voice in this setting as well tonight. And um, I live here and it's it's uh, it can be aggravating to hear the noise all the time. I mean, it's Monday through Sunday. There's not a break in between. And it's very uh, disturbing and it's very inconsiderate for the other people who go there and enjoy that to not be thinking about the people that live right behind her. Yeah, you can move. But this was an option that I had that was convenient for me and my grandson for one, for him to go to school, two, for me to get to my job at Stanford. And because I have to use ready wills and things like that, it's just easier for me and it's quicker and less expensive. Uh, so I really wish they would really take in consideration the people, the newborn babies that we have here in this complex as well. Like I said, I'm right behind the, the park. So I don't even hear the kids playing on the playground, but I do hear the pickleball taken all day long. And I mean, it starts from Thank six you, in the morning Janice. to 10 o'clock at night. Thank you, Janice, for time's up. Thank you. Thank you, Janice. Thank you, Janice. Hi, thank you. Can you hear me okay? Okay, great. Um, I'm a tennis player, and um, I know that often when I go, it's difficult to find a court. There's a high demand for the courts at Neilon Park, and we as a community and city are growing. So we need more courts, not fewer tennis courts. So the idea of converting tennis, more tennis courts to pickleball courts, I think is a terrible idea, especially because half the pickleball players are from out of town. So to accommodate people from other cities by taking away tennis courts from Menlo Park residents, I think is a really terrible idea. Also, the dual use doesn't work at all because the lines that are used for pickleball really interfere with one's ability to play tennis. I'd also like to say that the tennis courts are kind of in poor shape, which discourages people to play tennis and at night, especially because the lights are are not very good. They really need to be replaced. It's it's so hard to see the tennis ball at night. So I really recommend that that Menlo Park fix those lights and fix the net so that the, the tennis is um it can be improved at in the Thank you. Thank you.
And that is our last public comment. Thank you. With that, public comment is closed and we'll open the item for commission discussion. If um, I could ask um, Director Reinhardt um, to put up the decision matrix on the screen. Uh, I could put the recommendations on the screen. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to set there. Uh, there were five, um, four of them are on a slide, and the fifth one is really about the timeline for reviewing every couple of years. So maybe I'll focus on the slide that has the other four. <clears throat> oh, sorry, I'll just get up. Get my way there on the, on the Zoom here, almost there. Roger, thanks. Commission, you want to add any comments that are five minutes of clarification for the staff members? Sure. So, uh, thanks, Mr. Um, this We're making recommendations to be added to the master plan, which then may or may not be considered by city council, is that correct? Or... Um, the recommendations would definitely be considered by city council and in order for the addendum to be added to the master plan, the city council would need to like, accept it. Accept accept it. it. Sure. All right. So there's definitely that next step. No problem. All right, now we have these, these four and five on the other page um, to consider the, sending this recommendation to, so we can have a discussion if there's any specific um, ones that you would like to have any changes or clarification on um, to be considered to the um, Yeah, so I, I'm starting to get that Milan part. Um, last time we had talked a lot about the noise mitigation. Um, so I guess my question is, it looks like the plan is to dedicate four ports at Milan Park. Um, I'm concerned about the noise um, between our previous pickleball meeting and this pickleball meeting, I went to Milan Park for the first time and I was shocked by how close the court was to the apartments that are right across the street. Um, I know just like walking by pickleball courts at Kelly Park and at Red Horn Park in Redwood City, it's loud and I can't imagine living that close to pickleball. Um, I am also, uh, find it hard to believe that the noise mitigation is going to mitigate noise enough to um, significantly improve the noise concerns. Um, and it does seem like a quality of life issue. So I would be wary of saying let's dedicate four pickleball courts without a clear way to mitigate the noise. Um, like I would say if the noise can be mitigated with whatever stuff to be a calm on the fence, great, go for it. But I would be wary of dedicating those four to about a sound noise mitigation system. I agree with Commissioner Ontario. I visit Milan Park as well, and it is really close to the apartment, so I'm sympathetic to the caller, uh, what she deals with her grandson and all. Um, so I'm actually in favor of striking one completely, but on the condition of expanding elsewhere. And I would recommend expanding further in Burgess Park because that park is more, the location is more um, convenient or rather addresses all these noise concerns it's near the train station, the central location. And the location would be adjacent to the basketball court. And you can also take the uh, location of the basketball court as long as uh, the basketball court is moved somewhere else. So um, it, the, at the very least, maybe two courts can be built in part of the parking lot area. And then maybe we could expand it to four if we, if we displace the basketball court somewhere else in Burgess Park. And remind me, and we talked briefly about this at our last <clears throat> meeting on this. Um, 
what would it look like to, I mean, we, we need to do some basketball related outreach and which we have not undertaken. What would kind of be the time frame for doing that and effort? Yeah, great question. So I think this does kind of, we just kind of do sort of point out before on this list, which is a feasibility study for constructing new purpose built pickleball courts in and around town. Um, this slide is very summarized from the information in the staff report, just to give a little more detail on the feasibility study. It would look at all the city owned parks, joint use facilities, most of them are owned by school districts, but that we have agreements with them to use. Um, there are a number of development projects in the pipeline. I think one of our programs just mentioned one, which is the SRI site, that have recreation components as part of the development agreement. The developers required to provide parks and recreation amenities. Um, we also, let's see, would look look at it any other location opportunities. Basically, look across the entire city. Um, then evaluate each side for its feasibility, what would the cost to be, what's the accessibility like for parking, the noise, um, impacts to like other park uses, compatibility. Um, you know, if if um, you know a, an existing amenity needs to be displaced or replaced in order to, because for example, the basketball court at Burgess was mentioned, and we desire to still have that outdoor basketball at Burgess, so. There would be sort of this follow-on effect of okay, well then where would we put this amenity that we're moving? Um, all stuff we do all the time, um, and that's what the Parks and Rec Master Facilities Master Plan is for. Um, so that would, um, uh, as far as timeline, we would anticipate that, provided that City Council agrees, authorizes that there would be some costs associated with that, not a lot, but but definitely some. We would um, likely look to engage the services of a professional in this area, maybe a landscape architecture firm or another kind of recreation expert. We actually do have a few on contract currently with the city for other projects that we could maybe um, just work within that contract to do such a study. Um, I think it, it could get done um, during calendar year 2024, start to finish. So that, that's around the timeline because it would be very focused you know, on this one specific use. Um, the pickleball to get done in a relatively expeditious time frame. But just, just to clarify a little bit, that would be the, the feasibility study could be done in calendar 2024. I think, were you also asking about whether the conversion and construction of pickleball facilities at Burgess could be done in 2024? Yeah, well, yeah, I'm for both. So the, the, the construction part is a whole other animal. I think it just really depends on like, well, what is recommended and what is the project? If it's a project like, for example, just restriping an existing surface and adding some nets, that can happen relatively quickly. If it's, you know, basically dig, you know, excavating, pouring concrete, constructing things, that, that obviously would take a bit longer because there's a lot more engineering and design that would go into it, not to mention the cost. So uh, I think one reason why the recommendations here are what they are is that there are some solutions that are um, kind of already kind of already happening, which is you know Neil Park. There are currently four pickleball courts there. They've actually been there for some time now. Um, same at Kelly. And then the Willow Oaks Park improvement project is literally happening right now. They're, they're working on the dog park and the playground, and then there'd be a next phase the city council would consider. So those are sort of already in the pipeline. Yeah, I'm, I think, I don't know, I'm seeing part. I think we're maybe okay with two, three, and four, five ish more, and more like wanting to have more. Focus discussion on number one. Is that? Yeah, I mean, I'd also like to talk a little bit about Kelly Park, um, but not like I think what we're talking about. Because I, because I'm looking at all of these parts and knowing, I guess in my head, I'm trying to. There's things that can we do is like long term goals that we can have, and then there's kind of immediate goals, and then then torn about how we're doing some of these goals, how it's affecting. Residents versus 
residents that don't live in the area but are playing are utilizing these courts versus the residents that are living behind these courts. So I'm kind of trying to figure out a solution the like a temporary now solution so that way pickleball can be in use in many areas in Menlo Park, but at the same time honoring the residents that live near pickleball where it's causing a daily noise um, issue. Um, and then, you know, having the kind of a long-term idea of looking and using number four, looking into Burgess, but knowing that that's not going to be a solution right now. So us having, figuring out what would be the best like solution now to, to kind of meet everyone's need as much as we can, and then have the second conversation at a later time about what um, we could do as a more permanent because even number three is, gonna, is not existing. So we have basically one and two right now that exists. Um, so I know we've talked about Kelly Park, even though it is not a location that right now currently um, pickleballers are flocking to, knowing that we have an upcoming new building that is going to be um, hopefully finished by early of next year, um, that that may shift um, given the fact that some pickleballers might also have families and uh, other people within their group that might be utilizing that center. So it might make sense that Kelly Park become another hub or shift for that. And that could then change the need of us to use. And it also fixes the, the noise issue for the for the residents at North Park as well. So I'm kind of still trying to I just saw that. So, oh, oh uh, maybe quickly, it might be a helpful exercise because we 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 did talk about numbers here, mm -hmm. number of available actual pickleball courts in Menlo Park. Mm -hmm. Maybe we could just kind of sketch a rough timeline for members who are at this meeting. So, we have the four at Neon. We'll kind of keep that as it is, status quo. Kelly Park. Or will be built roughly. Or are there? Or are there now? On the on one of the on sports. But so they'll be refurbished or add that padding to make it more uh, amenable to users. Yeah. Correct. Next year, the noise shielding noise from the other direction. Right now, right. as opposed to people. Yeah. So maybe that number turns from zero in terms of uh, you know people actually wanting to be there or after all the improvements are done <laughs> next year. And then Willow Oaks, brand new facility. The idea was, you know, two brand new purposeful courts that'll be amazing. So that increases to six. And then we have a potential discussion on the study that will look into Burgess as a more long-term solution. So I think this is great. And well, I think this is, uh, a great step forward. And we're kind of avoiding this robbing Peter to pay Paul with the tennis community as well as the pickleball community. So I think this is a reasonable compromise. I think my concern is that the pickleball courts at Elon Park are affecting people's quality of life. And if they are going to remain there, um, for three years until there are pickleball courts at Burgess, that doesn't seem fair to the residents. I think residents' quality of life trumps entertainment activities. Um, and I think, unfortunately, unless the noise can be mitigated, it really does seem like a quality of life issue to even say, let's keep them at Milan for two to three years until there are new courts that can be built somewhere else. I wonder if they can be moved to another centrally located park, but it's not within 40 feet of neighbors. Um, that's my that's probably my big concern with Elon is that we'll just continue the status quo and never really address the noise issues because this is true, it is facing apartment buildings, and we were very quick to act on the zip line that is facing homes. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm assuming. The resident makeup is pretty different. Um, and I would hope that we would address concerns either way. It's all a great conversation. Maybe we've since we've taken three notes, if I can just chime in now and address a few of the things before we just throw ahead here. We'll try to work backwards 
So just for the commission's recollection, one of the big issues with the zip line was that the noise was occurring overnight. So that, that was a, that kind of a big distinction between the state time and the ways that we're hearing complaints about the pickleball. Um, let's see. The feasibility study, one element that I neglected to mention in my quick overview there is um, that resident and user engagement would be an incredibly important part of that. We've heard a few comments about, you know, we've heard from some residents who are super motivated, but we haven't necessarily been able to really reach out to a wider region of folks, such as the neighbors and other folks, and certainly the feasibility study to include that and um, really kind of get a sense of like the overall impact and especially if like other uses may potentially be affected, like like basketball, for example, then you know that study would include an outreach to like those users and give us some data and just to help inform decision. Um, let's see. And I think I'll stop there. Let me ask a, an old question, I guess, maybe because I haven't been on this commission as long, well, in terms of how we ended up at Fort 5 versus on the other side. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Now I'm remembering. We... No, no, now I'm remembering one other, one other thing, which is about the noise mitigation court, which is that um, it, we've heard sort of mixed reviews. Well, you know, in some cases we've heard that hey, it seems to help, and in other cases, even locally, we've heard like oh, it didn't help. And it does seem that the materials matter to a certain extent, the type. Um, we have a little bit of research to do just to make sure that you know the fence seems pretty sturdy, but I just want to make sure that we don't do something that could compromise the fence. We recently had a fence in the park that went out for a while due to a tree, but um, we the but the upshot is that um a mitigation such as hanging a noise dampening material on the fence is a fairly straightforward thing to attempt and not overly costly. So um totally here and understand like the concern about the noise, and that's one we probably could move fairly quickly on and see how it works. We do have the benefit of other communities that have tried different products, and so. Um, you know, obviously this would be something that we would also present to the city council so that they kind of understand the trade-offs there. But again, that could probably happen fairly quickly if that's the direction we go. Cool. And then back to why we selected court number five, I think it primarily had to do because it's stuff between within its own fence, as opposed to being ganged together with uh, two tennis courts next to each other. And um, we have heard at the time, I think we're continuing to hear, that having the two activities right next to each other with no dividers, it's just kind of compatible. Oh, the latest. Yeah, the other reports aren't necessarily further from residents. They're all pretty mm -hmm. linear refreshing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like we are agreement with five, four, three, two, and there's been a discussion of one either being taken out or going to the noise mitigation route, keeping it as is. And what is that where I'm? Yeah, I think, I mean, this is just me personally, I would say I wouldn't support currently dedicating four courts to pickleball without being able to mitigate the noise. I would say I would prefer my personal preference would be keep it temporary, try the noise mitigation, and then revisit depending on the results of the noise mitigation. That's that's my view as well. And I remember, yeah, that if we're able to trial or try out you know, that, the noise mitigation and actually see if that makes a difference, um, I think that's important, especially for yeah, the people living so close. Could I uh, add, if that's the recommendation that ultimately is decided on tonight, um, while we're kind of uh, addressing, trying to address the noise, putting noise mitigation material on the fence, while we're you know, touching the fence and working on it, there have been uh, fairly regular requests for a second access gate into the court, which I think would have value 
either way. So we, I'd, I'd recommend like just to move forward with that at the same time as an announcement to the court either way. And um, also we have had requests for some additional seating for um, folks when they're waiting. And that's also fairly straightforward to add and also enhances the court. So without necessarily, if you decide to kind of keep the current situation temporary, but do those other things, um, it kind of would make sense to, to do all those little improvements to the court at the same time. Can I ask you a question? Sure. Yeah. So I, because I, I, I kind of, I'm kind of both. I mean, I also understand that, that what you call me there with one, wondering if you would have like a solution of like, if, besides we're waiting on that timeline of all these new ones, would there be any other temporary solution you could think of if we were to strike out number one? Just um, curious. So, yeah, to me, I, I just don't want to exacerbate the problem at Elon by adding more pickleball capacity. Um, it's, it's a popular sport and it's great that people are playing it, but people, we've had residents call multiple times on whether it be noise, parking, etc. So it's just not the appropriate location to uh, continue adding, adding capacity. So that's why I'm very much in favor of actually adding an additional item, really specify Burgess as a target location going forward. Um, and I'm super hopeful, as the chair said, that Kelly Park does turn into a destination, especially after the community center is fully built out. It's absolutely going to be beautiful. I think so very much looking forward to that, that being uh, a future of uh, uh, next where people gather to do recreation. I would say like a really short term solution would be potentially looking into Willow Oaks, like take the ten, take a tenant court from Willow Oaks. Again, I'm not sure exactly how far that is from residents. And I would say probably check on that if it's like within the 200 feet that USA Pickleball recommends. But if the plan is to eventually put purpose built courts there, could tennis court there be converted? And the court at Milan go back to tennis so that we have a more centrally located place for board pickleball courts potentially. Almost having like a pilot at Willows before a permanent house created right. at Willows. And, and also to ease the noise burden that is at Milan. So we take them as they come. So, uh, all great discussion. Let's see, um, so totally could add if, if the commission's discretion to say, well, let's focus on Burgess Park when we do feasibility study. That seems like a very desirable location for a lot of reasons. Um, so it's just going to really make sure that the study focuses on that. Sure, definitely. Um, with Willow Oaks, the only caveat I would say to any kind of temporary solution there right now is that it's currently construction like the, the dog park the playground there's um the parking's already a little limited so probably wouldn't be the best choice to try to do something there right now at least until that construction's done my understanding is the dog park and the playground will be wrapping up in the spring um, at some point in the first part of next year the plan is for city council to not only look at this agenda but also to look at phase two of the willow oaks Park improvements. If the recommendation um, is to consider adding pickleball courts, then it might be a question of really um, when the construction wraps up in the spring. If the city council were to say yes, go forward with pickleball courts there, we probably pivot with the same construction contractor, the same contract, and just roll right into the work to construct those. I don't know how long that would take because they haven't done all the math on it, uh, but. Um, so that would sort of preclude, I think, like kind of a temporary solution because it'd be construction for much full time. Yeah. Um, yeah. Should I have to summarize what yeah. I've been hearing and. Totally correct me if I'm wrong, but what I'm hearing is um, these recommendations with a few changes. One of the changes is hold off on dedicating the Neilon courts permanently 
but proceed with the other elements here, and in particular, assess the effectiveness of this prediction. Um, moving down, I think, to number four would be to um, and recommend that Burgess Park be identified as like a target location right out of the gate. Like definitely look very closely at that as a potential location um, and probably like a first priority type of location. Uh, might be those are the two adjustments that I heard. I'll motion to recommend recommendations in the draft that I don't know with the the um additions and changes. Is there a second? Second. So there's a motion to adopt the recommendations in the draft addendum with a few changes. Um, one being to make the adoption of the four pickleball courts at Milan temporary as opposed to permanent, um, pending assessment of noise mitigation, um, and then also to prioritize consideration for pickleball courts at Burgess. And it's to vote. Commissioner, um, sorry, Chair Bumipi, how do you want? Yes. 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 Um, Chair Bunyaga, can I ask for a point of clarification? So there were a few other items uh, in the addendum. Uh, one of them was uh, a cadence for reconsidering um, when we sort of open up the Parks and Rec facility master plan. It did it. Um, you want to weigh in on any of that? Oh, it's in, I, I'm sorry. It's, it's in number five. Yeah, you just never mind. You just just, it's off the screen. It's out of my mind. Okay. Thank you. My apologies. Um, we'll move on to item D, informational items. Informational items are transmitting the Parks and Rec Commission and staff's effort to provide an update on matters of importance to the Commission. Informational items are not action items. However, a commissioner, city staff member, or member of the public may request to make a comment or ask a question of the, of the informational items. D1 department updates. I will provide a brief introduction. To this. Well, they're in the staff report. Um, these are our monthly statistics. Uh, we have a reporter that since I think July, just because of the number of phone meetings with the library committee, so we have. Produce them, but um, they're there. And it's, I have any questions, please let us know. I, I do want to say also if there are suggestions about other data that you would like for us to begin to compile, we welcome this. Ashley, do we have any public comment on this item? At this time, if you'd like to make a public comment on this item, which is item D1, um, be notified of staff liaison by using the right hand feature at the bottom of your Zoom screen. Dialing in, you can use star right up on page three, it's going to be true. And again, this is just for item D1. I have no comments. Parks and Rec, you can send an agenda calendar. I can pull it up if you want, Ashley. And I think the main thing that staff would like to call to your attention is the December, so the fourth Wednesday in December, probably not going to work for a majority of the commission and city offices are actually that week. So um, we propose that the commission meet on December 13th, which is the second Wednesday of December. And then to see like the proposed agenda topics, obviously those can change. Okay. 
it's okay. And then just the other thing, just to explain on May 22nd, where's the date may change. Um, the city council does a pivot workshop around that time of May. And so they're still trying to kind of calendar when that might take place. So it could potentially be on the usual Wednesday. In May, that is. Actually, do you have any public comment on this item? At this time, if you'd like to make a public comment, please notify the staff liaison by using the raise hand feature at the bottom of your Zoom screen. If you're dialing in, you can use star nine to engage the raise hand function. And again, this is for item D2, the tentative agenda calendar. Um, I think just wanted to add it. Can we add when the calendar in the calendar, future calendar once if we have a timeline for when we do the mortgage mitigation, when we revisit. I don't know if we have to create the timeline, but when when I guess it depends on when we get that the material. Yeah, one of the sessions in the tenant agenda is unscheduled future topics. Okay. We could like record it there. And I think some of this may depend on um, like the city council review and things. So if that works, we can put it on the schedule yeah. every month. Yeah. It depends on when the mitigation material actually has been properly assembled. Is there like a once that happens, is there a Timeline that you would think would be an efficient amount of time. See, I think it is. Okay. I think, um, and Patricia, jump in if you, if you think otherwise. But there's sort of the seasonal consideration, which is that we're kind of getting into the latter part of fall and winter, and that um, the springtime activity seems like when we have a more robust use and a, 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 a more fulsome. Uh, kind of look at what the noise is and how well the noise mitigation is working. So I don't know, Trisha. I would agree with that. It would be a harsh time. Yeah, this winter it tends to be pretty severe. Um, I did want to actually circle back. Um, there was another comment that I did want to address, and it was about the current sort of physical state of the tennis courts at Neilon Park. So staff is, is very much aware that a number of the light fixtures uh, need to be replaced. Um, the Public Works Department was notified about that um, a couple of months back. But the issue is the light bulbs themselves are um, they're on back order. Like we're still dealing with supply chain issues. And so we've been working with the Public Works Department, but there's not a lot to do there except for those come in. Um, the nets actually have the receipt, and my understanding is that we just going to install those um, within the next couple of weeks. So I'm not sure exactly when, but they said they'll get it done um, this month. So we'll remember um, cash can or yes, great, good memory. Uh, there was a request for additional trash can, but the uh, trash can and recycle bin was was placed there. That's yeah, so. What about the uh, electronic reservation system? It's one thing we've heard about. What our comment was that all that matters is peak time, um, finding a court at, during peak time, maybe a more convenient system to reserve a court during peak time would alleviate this issue where you can't find a court at that peak time. Yeah, thank you for that. So um, our recreation software does uh, allow for that. Actually, that information is viewable. We're just working on making it a little more user friendly, so that you can like really without the device, really see the schedule, who's got a reserve and reserve. You can do that now. It needs a little more fine tuning. It's not not even quite in beta mode yet. It does work, but we want to do a few more improvements. So we're going to be able to roll that out fairly soon here. Um, this would cost me an additional update while we're looking at future agenda on this topic, which is um, the commission also had made some recommendations around fees associated with tennis courts and pickleball. So just an update that the city council right now is tentatively 
scheduled to take up the master fee schedule update on December 5th, which would be a first reading and the second reading, I think, would be the following. And so um, you know, we're planning to carry forward the Parks and Rec Commission's recommendations on fees in, in that update. Right. And that might actually change the calculus a little bit when people are looking for reservations to supply us from this area. Is it possible to make a public call on this since this discussion was different over at Avenue 4? Okay. I don't have a public call on this. Um, I don't think already. No? But we do um, state council public comment already on this one. Okay, I'm just sure. I like Sean's talking about something different now yeah. that I would have liked the public comment. So I just want to clarify because you were discussing uh, for unscheduled future topics, placing a review of the noise mitigation for pickleball right. that sort of prompted the discussion, but it certainly could be over the public comment period. But that would be unscheduled if I get screwed on the budget. Thank you, sir. At this time, if you'd like to make a public comment on this item, please notify the staff liaison by using the raise hand feature at the bottom of your Zoom screen. If you're diagonally, you can use star nine to engage the raise hand punch. And again, this is for item D2, the tentative agenda passage. Thank you. The lighting, just as a test work in general, it is really outdated. And one of the things that I didn't see, and I didn't comment on it earlier, because frankly, we're talking about pickleball and not about tennis, is that the tennis courts also need some upgrades. So, Willow Oaks, I know that that's actually on the plan. I've seen it on there to upgrade the lighting, but the lighting at Milan is important. It's like, I mean, it's, it's so bad. And by the way, I asked a year ago for the lights to be changed, and they never were. And they changed the lights in the pickleball courts, and you never change the lights for tennis. Half of them are out on each court. But if there's a problem with supply chain because those lights are so outdated, like if you turn them off, they never turn back on. You have to sit there and wait in the dark for like 20 minutes. It's crazy. None of the other courts that I go to now have lights like that. So I would like to see lighting upgrade actually added to the plan. Of something that we're doing for tennis. Because going back to like where the fees coming from, where the revenue is coming from, last time I checked, they're still coming from tennis players right now. But I feel like somehow it's been all about fighting over pickleball space and not just about like the enjoyment of like what the residents are doing. And as the coach of the Hillview tennis team, you know, the kids are important. I want them to have nice facilities. I want to be able to play. I have to admit, they look really gross right now. And then we go to like Pinewood or Memo, and yes, I know they're private schools, but still, I mean, the MA courts is beautiful. The courts at Elon right now, it's, um, it's a bit horrible. So I would like to see something done like specifically for tennis and just for us to be looking at that and maybe making an agenda item for that too. Um, and I think that's all I can speak about specifically, um, but the basketball court, I would say as far as tennis goes, there are two tennis courts here at Burgess and those are further away from houses than anywhere else still, further away than anyone. But the basketball court has the surface right now. So I don't know, you're gonna torture somebody. Maybe basketball can suffer a little bit, you know, and help the residents, you know? Anyway, thank you guys for all your, you know, considerations. Thank you. And again, this is a call for comments related to adding items to the tentative agenda calendar. Atif Rahman, you can address it. Hi, CTPNR and the council members. Thank you so much for letting me speak. Um, so, uh, so this is great progress regarding pickleball and tennis uh, courts at Nyalong. So um, I would like to mention the same problem um, regarding the lights. Um, a lot of tennis people have, tennis folks have previously emailed the city regarding that and it has not been resolved yet. 
Um, so uh, it would be nice to have a look at that. Also, um, earlier we saw some data regarding tennis court uses and, and the pickleball. So uh, it seemed like uh, comparing, with, comparing with some data that we uh, took after the last meeting, we saw that uh, some of the data were collected probably during the holiday or something. And so there, there are some inconsistencies there. Like we see that other than holidays or say the courts are wet uh, during inclement weather, uh, it's pretty, uh, it's pretty crowded, and we we still have to wait a lot. The other day, um, a few days ago, we played there, uh, and we had to wait for courts. So this this continues for the tennis. This situation uh, is pretty consistent. It it gets crowdy. So don't want to uh, put too, too much uh, on that uh, right now, but. Uh, I, I was wondering if it's possible to quickly fix the lights. Uh, also, if it's possible to reduce coaching in our courts, a lot of private lessons there due to that we can get. Uh, during peak hours, it's really busy. Um, uh, the noise concerns are still valid and it would be nice to have bar barges, pickleball courts be expedited because this problem continues till the construction is complete. Uh, thank you so much. Yeah. Okay. Move on to E, E, Commissioner Reports, E1, Individual Commissioner Reports. Would any commissioner like to make a short report on items of interest to the entire commission? And um, that meeting is adjourned at 4 p.m. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.